Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineer channel. My name is Tim, the Engineer, and in today's video, we're finally going to get going again on the eRunner prototype. For those who don't know what that is, check out my previous videos where I go over the design and the physics and how it's gonna help me break the world records of human performance. I've been wanting to put this thing together for close to a month, but got super sick just over and over again. Couldn't seem to uh, get, get the filming done. And I've been waiting to open up the rear hub motor because I wanted to do it on camera. So finally, it's that time. Before we hop into the assembly, let's open up that hub motor. So after a ton of research, I ended up finding this very specific uh, 3000 watt hub motor on Amazon. And the 3000 watt, watt hub motor is like a huge power source. Uh, I can tell just by how heavy this box is, which means there must just be a ton of windings in the motor, which is gonna be great because that's going to definitely provide the power that we need to drive this thing forward. And also the weight is not a bad thing because that weight is actually counterbalancing uh, me pushing down on the front of the frame and making sure it's not gonna you know, tip forward about the front wheels. So the weight is welcome and yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. When I was a mechanical engineer professionally, so many of the designs that I was making were using off the shelf parts that weren't really of this sort of DIY um, scope. They were more like professional grade components, which meant they often were accompanied by CAD files. So that means as I'm designing, I'm actually in real time accounting for the locations of all of these various components because with their computer aided design files, I can actually put them into the assembly, uh, but I didn't have that luxury here. As I was opening this box, I was thinking, where's all this stuff gonna go? I mean, luckily I built the eRunner frame to be extremely modular, so I have lots of places to put things. But uh, yeah, you can definitely see as I'm evaluating each one of these items and thinking about where it's gonna live on the frame because that stuff is still totally up in the air and I'm gonna be making those decisions as I build it. All right, so the contents of the box is the hub motor itself, which is actually for an electric motorcycle. So it's super powerful. It's capable of like 60 miles an hour. Um, the other items that came with it are all the electronics. And this is the actual motor controller which is gonna hook up to that long wire that's going into the hub motor assembly. Um, generally, the instructions aren't that great. And yeah, you can see some of the other components that we're not gonna need because they're all made as if you were doing this like a motorcycle, but in this particular application, we're not. So we're gonna kinda have to uh, customize this assembly to make sure it all works for our application. The shaft of the hub motor actually has like a square drive section that attaches to that black flat bar that's near the sprocket. And that attaches with a bolt to the frame, so that way there's a place on the frame for the torque to react against and drive the unit forward. Quick shout out to my long-term buddy, Aaron, who helped me with the knuckles in a pinch. Uh, turns out when they came in, they were angled up for the kids' ATV application, and Aaron was kind enough to make time in his day to you know, get them cut off and reposition and weld it back on. They came out absolutely awesome. So I needed the brackets to hold on the rear wheel assembly and then the knuckles, the custom knuckles that we made for the two front wheels, but I don't have a laser cutter. I don't have access to a laser cutter, but I do have a 3D printer. So I made these little 3D printed templates that I'll be able to lay down on top. And they've even got perfectly sized holes for a Sharpie. So I can take the Sharpie tip, put it right in, mark all my hole locations, and then I'll just trace around the outside for the rest of it and cut it here on my bandsaw. I didn't take any video making these particular brackets because one, I was doing them at night and two, it was just kind of the monotony of manual work. But for not having a laser cutter, I think they came out pretty sweet. I've got all the frame members and all of my hardware laid out. Luckily, pretty much everything uses the same fasteners, so I really don't need much for tools. I'm gonna try and put some thread locker on each, each one of the bolts as I'm putting it in. And this entire frame was made as a kit per my design by the manufacturer. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it all bolt together with no issues.
was really hoping to finish this today and get it all bolted together, but there are a couple of issues and I'm not going to be able to. So the T brackets that hold the bottom of the frame are actually contacting these 45 degree brackets. Um, so I'm gonna have to cut a piece off there. So you can see I cut my finger on a aluminum burr while I was doing this. I'm gonna have to cut this off and only have one bolt hole on that side of the T. And then the other issue that I ran into is that these little fasteners that go in the rails and then the actual uh, socket head cap screws that go with them. I ran out of these, not enough of them came with the kit, so I'm gonna have to reach out to them as supplier. Um, also, I'm gonna have to order on Amazon. So um, this will all be one video, but I'm gonna pick it up here again in a minute. Several days later. Well, don't mind my mess here because I've been unbolting and bolting and getting things switched around, but embarrassingly, if you noticed from the last video, I actually just had the brackets in the wrong place. So now that I've got the right angle brackets down here on the bottom, got plenty of clearance in the 45 degree bracket, bought the, brought the uh, 45s or T brackets rather up to the top. Um, and now that I've got that done, I went ahead and put the other arm on, got basically the whole chassis in place with the 45 stanchions here. So um, everything's loose because I have to be able to slide these in order to put the rear wheel on but we're now ready to mount the steering knuckle mounts, the steering knuckles themselves, and put the rear wheel on. The hub motor came with a rear drive sprocket in case you were putting this on, for instance, an e-bike, but the e-runner doesn't have pedals. It will never ever need this. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it. These steering knuckles will accept a cotter pin because they're made for a castle nut. I'm gonna use the cotter pin just to, yeah, as a safety mechanism to keep that nut from uh, backing off, but I'm not gonna do it yet because look at these wheels. These wheels are just atrocious in their ability to basically be true and, and not have a ton of wobble, which I think is gonna affect the device at speed. So I have to figure out something else different for wheels. I'll do that a little later, but for today, we're gonna set it down on these wheels. Finally have the e-runner down here on the ground and I've just got to say I'm so stoked to see it finally come together as an engineer One of the coolest things is seeing something that you designed on a screen No idea what the proportions are gonna be like or you know how it's gonna feel in real life actually coming together in real life and the first time you see it's sort of like a, a Magical experience of you know, just creation and yeah I'm just totally stoked and the last the last couple things we have to do is mount the pivot here, which is going to um, allow for the manipulation of the connection bar, which is what attaches to the back of the harness. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that on and we can talk through the very next steps. The bearings I bought for the lift arm mount measure just over 500 thou, like 504 thousandths. And this is supposed to be a perfectly half inch rod, but for whatever reason, the fit isn't quite right and I can't get them to move freely within each other. I'm not sure if it's a burr on the end, or what, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in a drill and sand it to build a little bit more clearance. And now we've got a perfect fit. You can get all the way through the bearing, no issues.
I've had literally so many people confused by what the e-runner is. And when I try to explain sort of how it works, um, people just, their eyes kind of glaze over. So I'm gonna do my best as I'm building this to try and go into more detail about how it's gonna work because what seems obvious to me apparently isn't obvious. So let me show you a little bit about why this connection bar um, is so important. Let's go over this connection in detail because it's super important to the way that the unit functions. So what we have here are two flange bearings, which you might think, well, why do they need to be flange bearings? Because the heim joint can just rotate on this shaft and it's held in the middle in position by these two lock collars. And the reasons why we have reason why we have these two flange bearings is in case I get to the limit of travel on the heim joint and it starts to lock up. Well, now I've got the ability for redundancy to make sure that no matter what, I'll have freedom of motion because even if the heim joint is locked rotationally to the shaft, well, then these flange bearings will allow the shaft to move kind of like I'm showing you now. And a normal operation, the heim joint will just move independently, uh, you know, relative to the shaft. The reason why this connection is so important is because this is actually what connects my harness to the machine. Now you can see four and a half movements, if I pull and push, that's gonna be the unit pushing me forward. But um, not pictured here are the gas springs which are actually gonna push up on this bar. That's what's gonna give me the lift. So these two pushing forward and pushing up are how the e-runner simulates the drone pack. But what's really important is that I need to be able to move side to side in this operator cavity. So this is like a high swivel heim joint. It's got 55 degrees of swivel, and that's gonna allow me to move left and right, which is going to send a signal with the upcoming sensors that'll be on in the next video <clears throat> to the computer to let the computer know my direction of intent. The computer will then process that signal and send a response down to the servo motors to turn the wheels and recenter me in the operator cavity. One of the reasons why I had to wait to build the e-runner was because I needed to patent that technology. That's what I was going over in my patent video. That's kind of the magic behind this device. That's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. In the very next video, we're gonna be hooking up the linear potentiometers, gas springs, and servos onto the, the front spindle assemblies and get the entire mechanical assembly done and then it's onto electrical and programming one step at a time, we're gonna get there. But in the meantime, if you could subscribe to the channel, if you're watching and don't happen to be subscribed, like the video, share it with a friend, let them know about the mission that we're on, it would mean so much to me. Until then, onward and upward, and I'm out. Grew up in a place where they told you what to chase, told you how to run the race, every move was on the page, but I didn't like their way. Had to fight and misbehave, had to find a way to change, had to leave to find my way. Caught up in a daydream, I be in my mind up there almost daily It's how I pass time, no opinions safely It's how I understand what I want in this place, see Cause everybody wanna take